With the ramping down of Stadia first-party development efforts, former Stadia VP Jade Raymond's independent studio partners with PlayStation. Chances are the average gaming fan may not necessarily know who Jade Raymond even is, but they've probably played one of the games she's worked on. Producing multiple AAA games throughout her career, from Ubisoft to EA, Raymond has been a dignified member of the gaming industry for a long time. She's executive produced games in iconic franchises like Assassin's Creed II, Splinter Cell Blacklist, Watch Dogs Far Cry 4, and Star Wars Battlefront II. Most recently, Raymond was working with Stadia as head of Stadia Games and Entertainment, before Stadia decided to shut down its in-house development studio in February. A little over a month after Stadia Games and Entertainment's shuttering, Jade Raymond has formed her own independent game development studio. Even more, the studio has already partnered with Sony for a new PlayStation IP. Obviously, any big studio that Sony's able to tap into for exclusive PlayStation games is a big deal, but that is especially true for Raymond's New Haven Studios in Montreal. Sony undertook a great opportunity with securing Haven Studios' exclusive IP. Other than Haven Studios itself remaining independent of PlayStation, this PlayStation exclusive IP is yet another subtle but huge win for Sony at the loss of Stadia's shifting strategy. For context, Jade Raymond is a subtle but important name for the gaming industry. She had initially started in the gaming industry as a programmer at Sony Online Entertainment, now known as Daybreak Game Company, before moving on to Ubisoft Montreal for several years. She was a producer on the inaugural Assassin's Creed games, from the first entry to the formative Assassin's Creed II. Her tenure at Ubisoft from 2004 to 2015 also included producing Splinter Cell, Blacklist and Watch Dogs, as well as managing director of Assassin's Creed Unity and Far Cry 4. Raymond later moved on to EA, where she worked with Amy Hennig on Project Ragtag at Visceral Games, as well as created the at-the-time brand new Motive Studios. However, in late 2019, Raymond ended up departing Motive Studios to work on a secret project. That project would eventually be revealed in 2019 as Google Stadia. Jade Raymond was hired by Google to run the first party, in-house development studio known as Stadia Games and Entertainment. After her brief tenure at Google, Raymond has now found the opportunity most recently to establish her own independent studio, which leads to the announcement today. Sony seems to have partnered with Haven Studios at the right time, based on what Raymond seemed to indicate in the PlayStation blog today. I've had the opportunity to lead the creation of two highly successful original IPs and build multiple teams and studios from the ground up. Raymond reflected. Some of these adventures have been more successful than I could have ever imagined and others less so. Without reading too far in between the lines, Google's closure of Stadia's first-party development studio may have indirectly influenced Raymond's decision to focus on independent efforts. Even though Sony will be backing and supporting Haven Studios' inaugural IP as a PlayStation exclusive, the blog post makes it immediately clear that Haven Studios will remain independent. Raymond intends to emphasize Haven Studios as an opportunity in her career, as well as the many developers and staff's careers, to focus unerringly on the development of games. That much is evident in Raymond's post on the PlayStation blog, which echoes that sentiment many times. Raymond has oftentimes in her career spent much of her time in executive positions, setting up studios for success before moving on and fostering success elsewhere. She's also worked in ambitious sectors of the gaming industry, Stadia included, that haven't panned out for various reasons largely beyond her control. Haven Studios seem to be a direct response to that, as an effort independent of exterior factors that allows her team to create the game solely based on their creative vision. Sony is the perfect publisher and partnership for that notion as well, as evidenced by the many third-party PlayStation exclusives that have seen great success in the last few years. Obviously, being this early on in development, Raymond and Haven Studios had nothing to say about this unannounced IP other than it would be PlayStation exclusive. That being said, Stadia's loss in potential has evidently become Sony's gain, evidenced by how much has changed since Jade Raymond left Google in February. Not only did Raymond successfully found her own independent studio, but Haven Studios was also able to partner with PlayStation in just over a month after Raymond's departure from Stadia. It's a testament to the work she's done in her career thus far, 
and plans to do in the near future, potentially as PlayStation's next big exclusive IP. Sony has, over time, acquired and partnered with a ton of notable directors and icons from the gaming industry for PlayStation. Jade Raymond joins iconic personnel like Hideo Kojima, Corey Barlog, Neil Druckmann, and many, many more, whilst also being able to remain an independent studio free to work on the projects they want to. Similar to Kojima Productions, Raymond seems to infer that her career had become increasingly restricted in some form, and that Haven Studios' independence is a direct response to that. It'll be exciting to see what Haven Studios has in store for PlayStation fans in the near future, as this passion project could be the PS5's next big hit. Up next we have a Ghost of Tsushima insight news, as while playing Ghost of Tsushima, it's easy to get swept up in the beauty of it all. The island of Tsushima itself is absolutely gorgeous, the exploration, it is incredibly fun, and even the story is full of compelling characters and moments. Despite all of that, it's hard to walk away from the game and not have an immense appreciation for its combat system. From the very start, players will notice how crisp and clean the fights in the game are, and this only becomes more apparent as players tackle some of the more challenging duels. As it happens, great work like this doesn't happen overnight, and it took the developers six years to perfect this combat system. For those that aren't aware, Ghost of Tsushima is developed by Sucker Punch, the same studio responsible for classic titles like the Sly Cooper franchise and the infamous games. Its latest endeavor has proven to be one of its most well-received yet, with Ghost of Tsushima winning the Player's Voice Game of the Year award at the Game Awards in 2020. At the recent GDC showcase, Sucker Punch's co-founder, Brian Fleming, hosted a virtual Ask Me Anything event in regards to Ghost of Tsushima. During this event, he was asked what the most difficult feature to add to Ghost of Tsushima was, and without giving it a second thought, revealed that the combat was the hardest thing to implement. According to Fleming, the programmers, designers, and animators that were tasked with puzzling out Ghost of Tsushima's combat worked non-stop for six years in order to get it just right. During this time, Fleming says that these hard-working developers created multiple different builds of combat, each with a unique approach, before deciding on the one players are familiar with. In explaining why so much emphasis was put on the combat, Fleming says that it is one of the few features in the game that has to be able to work in any setting. Combat could break out at any time in Ghost of Tsushima, so whether players are fighting on a stormy cliff or a sunny beach, the experience needs to be flawless. Fleming closes this statement by saying that Sucker Punch is very happy with how the combat in Ghost of Tsushima turned out, but he acknowledges that it was a long, difficult road. Everywhere one looks in Ghost of Tsushima, this type of care and attention to detail can easily be seen. And as our final topic, Halo Infinite developer 343 Industries recently released a new development update, but what new information was revealed in the session? In the two decades since its first iteration, Halo has become synonymous with gaming and Master Chief has become one of the most famous mascots around the world. Some players have spent their whole lives growing alongside the Halo franchise, while new generations are just now being introduced. With each new entry, fans of the franchise eagerly await details from the developer as they speculate what could be in each new game. In a move that will surely appease those fans, 343 Industries released a monthly update that gave a lot away about some interesting new features coming in Halo Infinite. The Q&A was released as part of 343 Industries hashtag Ask 343 series where the developer will take questions from fans on social media through the community manager. Fans can submit questions by using the hashtag with their question on Twitter, yet this Ask 343 session however, surprised fans with some of the new information revealed. Fans of the franchise walked away from it with a much better understanding of the underlying mechanics and inspiration in the upcoming Halo Infinite. With a choice to start strong, the 343 Industries community manager asks a few questions relating to features that were in the original trilogy of Halo that some fans have asked to return. The first one that is mentioned is the request for dual wielding to make a return to the Halo universe, like in Halo 2 and Halo 3. This is denied by the lead sandbox designer, Quinn Del Hoyo, who says the studio's focus was more on balancing gunplay with the rest of the world, and so dual wielding probably won't be in Halo Infinite. The next question asked was about whether or not fans could expect to be able to hop into the role of an elite like they did in Halo 2.
This was denied too, for the same reason that the developer wanted to focus on their main game feel without the addition of those extra features. Something that gets touched on heavily in the session is how much of an emphasis Halo Infinite will put on making tactical decisions based on the weather and environment. 343 revealed that players will have to deal with day-slash-night cycles as well as weather that will affect how enemies act. There is mention that at night players shouldn't be surprised to see more phantom patrols and grunts sleeping while they're supposed to be on guard. Different biomes and sub-biomes will play a part in that strategy too, while also benefiting the storytelling aspect. When asked about how open or semi-open the world of Halo Infinite will be, gameplay director Troy Mashburn gives a very passionate answer about how the inspiration for the world of this next entry came from the spirit of the silent cartographer mission in Halo, Combat Evolved. The freedom to be in that world with those toys, free to choose an approach or lack thereof, was inspiring to 343 Industries, and that's what it wanted to bring to Halo Infinite. Even if the game isn't completely open world, players may be able to utilize machinery from previous missions in order to plan better for the next scenario. This will likely come as no surprise to people who've been following Halo Infinite's development updates. 343 Industries seems to be focusing on recreating a Halo feel in this spiritual reboot by giving players a freedom to explore and strategically plan out their missions. While fans will have to wait and see if that lofty dream can be achieved, the passion is definitely there for the Halo developer. And that's all for the video guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share the information. Subscribe if you are new and click the notification icon. And until then from SMPV, it's goodbye.